Corona was on everyone's minds. So much so, the world shut down these past few weeks. Certainly the middle school I taught at did. Not that I was complaining. Sure, I wanted everyone to stay safe and survive. But fuck it. I was thankful for the time off. Now, on this March Monday, I wouldn't have to be slaving away in a classroom for shit pay and shit administrators. I'd sleep in till noon. Then after some wine and a cup of coffee, I'd head on down to Lithgow's gym for an afternoon workout. Hey, it beat teaching rude 7th graders. The Rosemont Shopping Center here in Columbus, Georgia was deader than ever. Not only did China Walk and Damaris Beauty Salon have their lights off, even the fucking laundromat was closed, all over the corona scare. These past few weeks had been weird, no doubt. Historical. For the first time in decades, America was enforcing curfews and severe quarantines. But for the moment, I was free to go to Lithgow's, even if no one else wanted to. Call me a Karen all you want, but I wasn't complaining to be able to finally park my red Toyota at the front door. Hell, I didn't even have to get here at 2 a.m. to have the entire place to myself. The weight room had been Amy's personal playland these last couple of days. Dressed in a tank top and leggings, I walked up to the gym. With one glance back, I saw no cars zipping down the four-lane road behind me. The dentist office across the street void of human life nor were there any cars on the horizon. I was all alone in this humidity. Again, much better than being surrounded by shithead 7th graders. I strolled inside Lithgow's, waved at Maria, the gym's middle-aged manager, and the only other person here besides me. She kept to herself in that cozy corner office. Honestly, she didn't do much. Certainly looked like she hadn't hit the gym much judging by her chubby physique. Of course, no one was here. I had the workout world at my fingertips. With smug indifference, I put the lone flat screen on HGTV. At this rate, I didn't even need to use disinfecting wipes. No need to when I'd be the only one here. I hopped up on the treadmill, tossed my car keys into the cup holder, set my YouTube mix, and I was off and running. I looked on at those endless mirrors, at my pretty late thirties reflection, the average frame, the long brown hair and bland brown eyes. Hey, at least I was trying to get prettier. As Elton John's Teacher I Need You played through my earbuds, I looked around the gym once more, the whole area like a graveyard. The only problem was all the hot guys were gone, the one drawback to this corona shit God knows I liked watching Jason's ass when he did those squats, or his biceps when he'd bench press, his flowing hair drenched in sweat, the sexy Latino I'd bring home any day. But instead, I was alone, no different than being home alone with my three cats. Avoiding the midlife crisis meltdown, I increased the treadmill's speed. Now the calories were really starting to shed. I looked out the window, toward the dead parking lot, the empty street. I matched the treadmill's pace, getting out of breath quick, building up sweat, until a loud tap distracted me. I looked toward the glass door to see Maria waving at me. I waved back before she headed out, our cars the only ones left in Death Valley. Probably her lunch break, I figured. Of course, Maria wouldn't miss that. I scanned the wide room. The bathroom and tanning room's doors were still closed, the water cooler still full. I turned down the speed. Now, at a manageable pace, I pushed my hair back, faced my reflection. I got lost in Elton John's Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. The album swept me off my feet. I closed my eyes briefly. Then a loud bang erupted over Elton's melodies. Turning, I saw the bathroom door wide open. There, a tall black man stood in the doorway, his hair gray, his muscular physique wearing bright green medical scrubs, 
his face disguised by a red bandana. Uneasy, I turned off the treadmill. The fear set in. Even in the sweat, I shivered. The man just stood there. No way he was younger than 60, regardless of how fit he was. Battling the anxiety, I jumped off the treadmill. Then I saw sharp metal glisten back at me. In a vicious taunt, the man held up a knife. The blade too long to be a scalpel, too skinny to be a butcher knife. But it was still so goddamn sharp and still coated in blood. Oh shit, I screamed. Sensing my horror, the man came charging forward. I stood there petrified in fear, too exhausted to evade the killer's wild attack. The bandana of red death slammed into me, grabbed my arms in a death grip. Crying out, I threw us both into the treadmill, making the machine collapse. My keys slid out of the cup holder. The man pinned me to the ground. I looked on at those furious eyes, felt his grunts, his gasping for breath, his struggles to breathe. The man hoisted the knife up. Fresh blood fell upon me, thick drop after thick drop. Cringing, I turned, saw my car keys well within arm's reach. Like an all-too-eager surgeon, the man brought the blade down, straight toward my scared face. But I fought back. Moving quick, I grabbed my keys and smashed them into that fucking bandana. The keys fell to the floor, but the man's groans made it clear. My weightlifting had finally paid off. Groaning, the man slumped over to the side, and now I had my chance. I sprinted for the exit. My killer workout now hit new heights. I jumped over the treadmill's wires, shoved open that glass door, ran through the lobby, felt my adrenaline only intensify. This obstacle course killing my legs and heart, but never my anxiety. In one ferocious push, I slammed open Lithgow's gym's front door, entered the sweltering sunlight. The door shut behind me, and now I stood there, nervous, helpless. The Rosemont was a fucking ghost town. My Toyota, the only car left in this paved desert. The rest of the shopping center was closed. China Walk, the laundromat, everything. And no cars were coming down that four-lane road anytime soon. Somehow, Corona made this shithole even more desolate. The terror building inside me, I turned. My dread hit a fever pitch. I saw a sheet of paper taped to the glass. One Maria had just put up. Starting today, Lithgow's gym closed until further notice. Stay safe. The bitch hadn't even told me. Shivering, I stumbled back. All my quick glances further illuminated the obvious. I was alone with a killer. Then I saw the door burst open. Lunging out, the man snatched my arm. I came face to face with that mask of the Red Death. I had nowhere to go. Nowhere to hide. Straining, I struggled to break free, but the man's grip was too strong. Let go of me, asshole. I screamed. He leaned in closer. I yanked with all my might against his determined desperation. My fierce hits did nothing to slow him down, nor did my right hook. No, I cried. In one quick motion, the old man tugged off the bandana and let it drape across his hand like red slime. A smile crossed those crusty lips. Now I braced for the true horror, the man's real threat, and it damn sure wasn't the fucking knife. His kiss of death hit me hard. I felt drool and saliva douse my skin, felt the man's grip grow tighter, watched his dry cough continue its ominous onslaught. Hey guys and ladies, thanks for watching. Send your story or creepypasta to the email in the description.
My merch, Patreon, Instagram, Twitter, and Discord are down there too. So I did another one for my buddy Ronnie14. Dude's a beast. Anyway, a link to his Reddit is in the description. And his username is Ronnie14. R-H-O-N-N-I-E-1-4. Be good to animals, even people. Sit. Yo, it's Nemo. Barracks, Mr. Grace.